Well, if you go into any kind of hotel or motel, chances are you're going to be hard pressed to find one that actually still uses rotary phones. But that makes it easy for those of us who still like to use rotary phones on a daily basis to pick them up at decent prices. This is a Days In Western Electric 500 clone. It's actually manufactured by ITT. But many other companies also put their names on these phones like Stromberg Carlson. And this was used up until the early 90s in a Days In in Asheville, North Carolina. And I found that out because the phone number that's listed on this dial card actually still goes to that exact Days In. It's still their number all these years later. And the only thing that really sets this ITT500 phone apart from the others is that it just has a sticker covering up the regular dial, the numbers that are listed below it. So if I were to peel this sticker off, it would look just like a regular Western Electric 500 and the numbers would be on this plastic plate beneath this sticker. And mainly now, if you go into a motel or hotel, you're not going to find any phones like this. You're probably going to find one that looks similar to this. A lot of the ones I've seen so far are manufactured by Teledex which has now, I believe, become Cetus. They've gone through a vast majority of different names throughout the years, but it's all the same thing. And there are these boring digital tel analog telephones that are plastic, cheap, and have terrible electronic ringers. And this actually had a red, uh, red indicator here for when somebody called you. And I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was also a message waiting indicator Although I can't be sure. I don't think that they had personal voicemail for each hotel room back in 1983 when this was put, first put into service. It has a date code here that's stamped into the bottom of it. The 20th month of 1983, which would put this in May of 1983. And we have the 500 stamped into here. This is just a basic analog telephone. You could hook it straight into your phone line at home. It has a ringer equivalence of one amp because it uses two gongs for the mechanical bell ringer. And oddly enough, they decided to use a plastic control for the loudness of the ringer. Whereas my newer touch tone model uses a metal control. So this one's older, but it uses a plastic control. Thankfully, all these rubber feet are still on here too. They haven't been ripped off. So the phone sits nice and level with the surface and doesn't rock from side to side. And this is just a regular corded handset for this phone. It doesn't have a volume control. If it did, it would be right where that ITT logo is. And this does use a carbon microphone, which provides a unique sound that's a lot different from what we're used to hearing on cell phones and newer phones, just like this one over here. And this phone is new enough to use modular connectors. It's all modular. So you just unplug this. Everything is modular. This isn't the older style, which had the cord permanently integrated and hardwired to the handset and the phone, so there was no way of replacing it short of taking apart the whole phone and rewiring it all up. And there is the modular line connector. And one thing you can see here are all the instructions for dialing different things. If you want to call the operator, which I guess was also the front desk at the same time, uh, you would just dial zero. But if you want to call the front desk, you'd dial four. And there's instructions on how to call room to room. So if you want to call another motel room, you can just dial them without having to dial nine. Because this was hooked up to a PBX system, you would have to dial nine to get an outside phone line. We have instructions here for making long distance calls, to bill it to your room, to do a collect a credit card person to person, or a third party call. And unfortunately, this indicator light is burned out. It doesn't work anymore. And I did take apart this phone to try to take a look at how to replace it, but it's all, it's not user serviceable. I'd have to snip the wires and solder on a new light, and I'm pretty sure that finding replacement lights like these is not going to be an easy thing to come by. And now if we pick it up, we'll get a dial tone, but since this is hooked up to a PBX system, just like in the hotel, you have to dial 9 to get an outside line, and once you do that, you do get a dial tone. Here is a test of the ringer now using having it on a low setting. And now when you put it on the loud setting, it uses both gongs in here to produce a multi-tone ring, which sounds very nice.
And one thing that's nice about these older phones that you can't do with cell phones is when you get an unwanted call or you don't want to speak with somebody anymore, you can just go ahead, slam the phone down, and really give them the point that you're done talking with them. And I guess with these phones you can do the same thing, although it doesn't have the same effect. Not nearly as much as this. So let's get an outside line now. We get a dial 9. And I will just call 411. Free 411. Get more with the op. So we're going to get some ads playing. But it does make and receive outside calls. Now, to gain access to the inside of one of these phones, it's a bit different from the touch tone counterpart. There's one extra step to it. You have to remove this dial. And then from there, you can just remove these two screws and then pull this entire cover off. And how you remove this dial is you're actually intended to take a paper clip or something of that same size, stick it through this little hole here. You may be able to see just how small that hole is. And then rotate this, and then you'll be able to pull this right out. And then you'll be able to expose the main mechanism. There's the transformer for the ring generator. Uh, support of the ring generator here, the two gongs for the bells, and strangely enough some electrical tape over a wire. Maybe this got stripped or something and then they twisted the pairs together and put some electrical tape over it. But look, judging by the looks of it, it's probably been that way for a long time and as long as the phone works it doesn't make a difference. And there is the underside of the dial assembly now. And you can get an idea of what I was talking about with that light. It's all permanently mounted, so there's no way to change the bulb on the inside. I'd have to uh, remove these wires and get a whole new bulb on there. But finding one probably is going to prove to be very difficult. 